Let's go. All right. And yeah, here we are. Another episode of the false nine uh, featuring my boy buddy. And then we got a special guest today. Not visionless Dave. He's three lions Dave today. All right. I like that. I like it's coming that. home. It's coming home. It's coming. It's coming <laughs> home. All right. So we're going to go there, buddy. Do you have the world cup groups? Do you have it set up? Yeah, uh, well, I, I can't get it on screen, or I could, I guess. I don't really know how to do that, but I do have them all. No, 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 now. like you have them, right? Okay, yep, yep, all yep. right. So let's start off. Let's start off with, uh, buddy, what's Group A? Like, what? Let, let's start there. Okay, okay, so Group A is Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and the Netherlands. Can b- Before we even, like, talk about this group, how un- did you guys watch this, the fucking the ball thing? It's, it was it's so bad. It's the worst thing. I, again, I understand it's FIFA's big day, dude. I'm trying to watch it with my father-in-law. I'm like, this is the most bizarre shit i've ever seen in my life so right. my my group thread with all the like my my portuguese homies right my my boys mm-hmm. like our group thread was just like can we just get on with this can we fucking just get on with this i i give fox credit because they were bouncing in and out and they're like they're like all right hey yeah there's some guy speaking arabic right now like we'll be back like you know yeah, so like- <laughs> at least it saved it a little bit that way oh did, did you see people say that the the uh the mascot is the the dead souls of all the guys who like who gave their lives like the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> that's a great tweet that's a great tweet so here's my issue here's like i uh, shout out to montante because he says this all the time and, and it's something that i agree with like these sports people need like a common sense like guy like an average fucking joe to tell them okay this is like i get what you're trying to do like buddy you just said it's their day do the groups show it pull the balls get all the groups out now you got to half hour 40 minutes now you can comment on everything afterwards yeah and like and if that if that okay it's fifa's big show like put it on whatever like maybe like the whole stream on one channel but if you're fox sports bro you don't have to you didn't have to tell me it started at 12 you could have told me it started at 12 30 because i don't yeah. i don't know who i blame for that but like come on but I mean, it's days like that. I'm just glad Twitter exists because I didn't have to watch a single second of it. I got all the information I needed in 90 seconds by just like, oh, here's a weird clip of some little kid on stage. Here's the group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. England's with USA. Cool. All right. Let's move on. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So, buddy, uh, do that again. Qatar, Senegal. Um, Ecuador and the Netherlands. All right, so Qatar was like pot one in that. So if you're Senegal, the Netherlands, and Ecuador, you're very happy to be in this group. Like you're very yeah. happy. Yeah, like un- unless you s- unless the Qatar who played at like the Nations League in America like comes because like that was that was honestly one of the teams that I didn't think match up that well with the, that the US didn't match up that well with and like and they're definitely going to be tough to play at home like they're, if anybody's used to that like are they though are they though are they though like do they have fans like how many people live in that yeah. fucking country no all, all I mean is that like they're from there and that they probably yeah. play more football there than like, I, anybody else but like they're, want- they're, they're not an easy out in my opinion. You want me to take USMNT fans seriously when they're afraid of Qatar? I mean, come on. Have, some, fair. Respect for yourself. have fair. some respect for yourself. That's fair. That's an Alexi Lawless take. That's fair. But like, but, but like uh, no, I do. Like, I like. I'm. I'm not necessarily afraid of them. But it wasn't an easy match in the Nations League. All like, right. So let's let, in America. Hey, let's get this out of the way right now. I. I don't think. I think people do need to get over that. Like. There is no easy matches now in international football, the level that it's reached. This isn't 1990 anymore. Like when I was a kid, though, the World Cup in in Italy was like the first one that I got to see like here in American television. Before that, it was like 86 Mexico. I remember listening to it on the radio with like my dad and shit. 90 was like on TV. It was on like ABC, if I'm not mistaken or whatever. Like USA, like we were there was a lot of countries, not just the USA, that sent over like semi pro fucking players. Like, it just wasn't as far along. Like, Italy played the USA. I think they beat them 5 nothing. It could have been, like, 10 nothing. Like, it was – there was just a huge gap that just right now – I'm telling you, man, it doesn't exist the way that it used to. North Macedonia beat Italy in a playoff. Like, you see results now. Like, more times than not, teams – the better team will, will – but, but it's not a league. It's a tournament. So that one day, Absolutely. you pack it in, and you just play disciplined, play everybody back, and try to hit a counterattack. Most of these guys will have players playing in like, you know, division two in England or, or lower divisions in Europe. Like it's mm-hmm. not super easy anymore. So this is, like, this I want to get that out of the way. This is why the world cup and to a lesser extent, the euros are the best because it defies all logic, right? There's no way. I mean, the it's the same players, but like we've even seen with Maguire, how Maguire will play for England versus United. Like players play totally differently. They're playing under a different manager, 
Um, they're playing with different people, like, and it's tournament style. Everything goes out the window. So, yep. I mean, you you can look at teams like, at, in maybe I'll sound like a hypocrite now, but like Switzerland or like countries like that, where a lot of the times games come down to one chance. It can come down to a referee decision. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's not like football or basketball where, you know, there's more time to kind of pull away. It can come down to one moment. And if it's not your day, uh, literally anybody could lose to anybody. If some, yeah. some of those clubs score first on you, it, you you're never coming you're, back. You're, you're done. You're hurting. Not, yeah. to yeah. mention, not to mention it's being played in the de- middle of a desert in Qatar. Like everybody's going to – it's it's mid-season. Mm-hmm. So, in mid-season, no. this is going to be the wildest one because of that. I, I do mm-hmm. totally like – like the Premier League is stopping on – I want to say November 14th is the last day of the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. Everyone's released. And then the tournament yeah. starts the 21st. Yeah, yeah England has exactly eight right. days. England has eight days, I know, between the, st- the end of the Premier League and the start of the tournament. So that's not a lot of time. I mean, how do you guys think that – this mid season, this new aspect kind of is going to affect it. Cause I think it's actually going to have a huge effect. I mean, the English media, they, they always love to say like, you know, the German league, they play less games. It's less physical. It's less grueling. Mm-hmm. Um, same with other leagues. They, like they, they take Christmas off the whole thing. They yeah. take Christmas off. They're yeah. going to be more well rested. Um, climate can be different in the leagues. Like how do you guys think? I think it hurts England a lot, but maybe I'm just a biased England fan. I, or I, English I, people playing in England as well. I know what you mean, but I wonder what it. I wonder if it will have a positive effect, like on on um, like fitness levels, because you're so you're coming off playing every week. You you say you like some of those players. I think like so like David said like uh, that was a problem with like say USA and England getting getting um, early games. Like so like obviously VD just said England's going to play eight. Like Raheem Sterling could play eight days after he played for City. Um, but, in, but on the other side of the coin, he's like, he's, he doesn't have a month off. He's not okay. These guys go into probably like training, like a, after a couple weeks of the season, like in a normal World Cup. but like these guys are, are, they're coming from United. They're coming from city right into camp. They, they're going to be maybe in the best shape they've ever been for an international. So tournament. I won 1000%. 1, so that's where I'm saying like, it's, it's going to be different playing in the middle of a desert VD. Like they're going to have to watch that. I don't know if you guys saw the air conditioners like in, in every stadium. Like outdoor air conditioners. Yeah, no. I don't, yeah it it's wild. Sense. It, doesn't, it make doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But <laughs> they, whatever these people want to do, they're building fucking tropical islands in the middle of a desert. So whatever. But yeah, that, that was like a legit like landfill like ten years ago, and that was <laughs> yeah. in the way. So, yeah. <laughs> but so usually a normal World Cup, right? Everyone played the Champions League final is something like May fourteenth or May twenty first, right? Yeah. And then the 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 the, Eng- the regular European seasons end around mid May. Then these guys get like a week off and then they go into international training camp. Then the World Cup would usually start in the beginning of June. They'll have they'll play a couple of international friendlies, uh, usually two or three. And then they'll they'll start the World Cup in like the middle of June. So usually these guys are dead. They're on dead legs. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. It's it's 10 months without a break. This time they're going to have their normal summer break coming up this year. They're going to have no tournaments to play in. All right. A couple of friendlies, I believe, in September. And then they're going to have their league season. So you're probably going to see the freshest legs of any World Cup ever because of that. It's not at the end of the season. The freshest legs Mm -hmm. in the worst environment. like like, In the worst environment. Yeah, where it's just impossible. It's going to be so – like we thought like Brazil like in the jungle like in like July was bad. This is like 100 times worse still. There is something to be said too of like the the pace of international play is usually – a lot more relaxed than yep. league play just because the, everybody's feeling each other out and whatnot. And the time and, and outs international, are going to get too, Yeah, you know, and like international too. coaches, VD, are are notoriously more um, – uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Conservative. Like course, they, yeah. they, they, they don't want to give up the first goal. They have three games. You have three fucking games. So a lot of them go into that with a very conservative game plan. So 1,000%. Who do you guys think comes out of Group A? Uh, I love Senegal. I think Senegal wins that group. Yeah, they're pretty good. Like it's Mane, the goalie. Uh, they, they're just, you know, they won. They they obviously just got through beating Egypt and that wild thing, but they won the African Nations Cup, if I'm not mistaken, last year. I think Mane's just nasty. Uh, I I just I like that team a lot. Um, Ecuador is always solid, but like I don't know, it's just uh, they don't do it for me, and I think Qatar. They, Qatar could be the surprise second team. Put it that way. Yeah, you've got me excited about Qatar. I mean, they're they're playing in their home environment in the desert. It's gonna be, 
I mean, it's not local, certainly, but it's their region of the world. The Dutch aren't going to be feeling too good out in the desert. I think they stink anyway. Sorry, Montana. And, so. and then, and then here's the other thing with the Dutch. The, the, their their coach, me and Buddy talked about, it, is literally flaming this Qatar World Cup. Louis oh, van Gaal and, oh, yeah. <laughs> cannot yeah. stop talking shit about the country of Qatar. Did, did you see why? Well, I think I, well, he has prostate cancer. He said he has a pretty uh, aggressive form of prostate cancer this week. I wonder if he's just like, fuck it. I got, I might not even be there, dude. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, like, he's well, like, he is literally just every chance he gets, he talks about how corrupt. I mean, I love the guy. He talks about how corrupt FIFA is for doing this. Yeah. Like, he's just going all in. I, I, I have Holland like coming out of that group. I don't know like if they, if they I think I have Holland and Qatar. I don't know how where they finish. Like but um but like I think I think I'm probably maybe a little bit higher on Holland than everybody else, but they they're like I, I I don't know. I'm so scared of Senegal, dude. Like Mane can change a game on like we see him do it with Liverpool all the time. He can change a game on, like on his own. And Mendy in goal. Mendy's a great goalie. Oh, he oh True. my god, what a throng, dude. What a what a yeah. throng he had this weekend though. That this was weekend though, yeah. 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 All right, so buddy, Group B. Let's move on. Group B, Group B is the group we obviously talked about a couple times already. That's the group with England and the in the USA. The other All two right. teams in that group is uh, are Iran, who I I had to look up. I looked up the FIFA rankings because, uh, um, like you know, just just to the kind of just to give you a guide. Yeah. yeah, Iran's like twenty first like team in like the world, which which is they, like that, that you know the rankings are bullshit, dude. You, but, but like, they but climb. So they good. they they do really well in that Asian. Uh, they're in the Asian region. So they're mm-hmm. part of the Asia Confederate. If you go by the rankings, Group B is the most difficult group. So yep, um, and then and who's the fourth, buddy? So, so say that again. So it's either going to be it. So it's Wales versus the winner of the Ukraine and Scotland um, qualifier. So either way, you're group. getting like a hard fucking team. Oh Pretty yeah, much. that's not that's yeah. not easy. I mean, Scotland. I could tell you from playing them in the Euros, they're hard to break down. Ukraine, they're just hard to break I mean, down. Team probably a team of destiny right now. I don't know if you w- want to play Ukraine. Who knows if you want to even deal with that? And then Wales is always good. You know, I mean, have... and, you, and you, you, Gareth Bale, Gareth Bale, yeah. Gareth yeah. Bale, Gareth Bale. I, Gareth Bale's free, a game changer. He's a game changer. Free kick, the free kick he hit so nice against Last Austria. Year. Oh yeah, against Austria. Yeah. yeah. So all right. I, so I, so does anyone have USA and England not coming out of this? Nah. No, I got England. I can't speak for USA. Oh, wow. Here we go. I, I can't. Right. I can't. All right. Can't. So, B, listen, BND texted me that I have to ask you this. He goes, he wants yeah. to know. All right. He understands your dad. He gets all of that. But you're such a patriot everywhere else. Like, you're a big, you know, conservative sort of dude. You love America. We all know you do. How is it that you root so hard against the U.S. men's national team? Like, I don't understand it. I, it's just what you said. I mean, my dad, like I was raised to just think they're a joke. They're clowns. Like, uh, and they, I I have a lot of friends that are USMNT supporters that I like very much, but a lot of that fan base is crazy. I mean, they are delusional. No, you're you're not wrong there. I'm on the record saying, I think America will win a world cup before England. I'm going to stand by that just because. I want America to be good. It's it's better for everybody. I would love to see America. I don't even I don't root against American players. I love seeing them in the Premier League. My brother he hates all American players. He wants them all to fail. I'm not <laughs> I'm not that extreme. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like just there's nothing worse to me than if like during the Euros or World Cup you go to a bar and you hear American soccer fans who it would be like listening to a British person talk about football like about nfl like they just so 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 vd like uh, to kind of help you with that it's like do you remember last year during the euros when like uh i think it was uh kirk and my blind mike were trying to talk about like the euros like what happened when they were watching yeah i do remember that it was just like they were so far off base of like what they were talking about yeah yeah i I, I got for me i i get secondhand like just uncomfortable from it but um Oh, I and on play, Twitter, I, they're the worst too. Like I, I like oh, they're they, the worst. They, and the coach, I, I don't like the coach. I'm sorry. I don't like the coach like, either. I'm on record. And shit, yeah, uh, I mean the yeah. quote he had last week about like shades of Maradona. Maradona, it was yeah. insane. It was fucking insane. Past three people and lost Dude. the ball at the top and of the lost box. the ball. Like, like, like yeah, what are we doing? Play, you know. But why do you have to v- say that? So VD, I am so with you. Like to compare it to maybe the greatest goal ever scored. 
ever the greatest goal ever scored. Like, yeah, uh, Ronaldo like, Champions League final 2008 greatest goal ever scored. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go too far, I do want to talk about the schedule. Okay, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. Before before you do that, hold on. Right. So my hold, I, on, well, hold on before you do that. Yeah, BMD, <laughs> B, BMD did want everybody to remember that Iran is our enemy. So I'm not cheering for <laughs> Iran. <laughs> we can unite. That's a good point. That's we a good can point. unite against I, Iran. Iran is our enemy. I yeah, love that. We, that's that got to be a T-shirt right yeah. there. That's got to be my, a T-shirt yeah. for the World Cup. The, the only I'll make I'll make a point defending USMNT. Like not not their fans who are delusional who who think like some of their center backs are better than like the center backs from Uruguay or like are better than a Ro- Rojo from Uruguay and stuff. If, you, if you've seen this, was us cranks poll this today. You would have seen that. But um, Eng- England has never beat the U.S. in a competitive game. Never. It's never happened. Not I, not in 2010. Not in 1950. Not in some weird U.S. Cup in 1993. They didn't. Beat I was there at that game. That was at Foxborough. That was they at Foxborough. They didn't beat him in 1812. They didn't beat him in 1776. England cannot beat the United States of America. <laughs> like so, I mean, and, and maybe maybe Qatar is different. Maybe BD will fucking have this clip in my head on a fucking like guillotine, you know? But like, they're just like, I for uh, for some reason I really believe that game draws, and then I like, oh yeah, they they both beat up Iran, and then whatever happens in the third game. But I, but I, it, it, the thing I like the most about the like the prospect of playing England is they're gonna let, and I know BMD probably said this on Kirkenoff, but they're gonna let the United States play, like, and that's like because because they're mm-hmm. gonna want to play their game, and I think the U.S. has pieces that can hurt England. It's if they do or not, like, but it's just, it's just whether they have the pace to expose them, and I think that they do. Okay, so then I, let me it, wait, it, let, it, let me give a hypothetical. Jaden Sancho scores the winning goal for England against USA. Are are you motherfucking Jaden Sancho? Are you torn at all between that? I, no, I'm I'm trying to find blame. Like who <laughs> who how did Sancho get the ball? Like who, yeah 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 who, yeah who got subbed? Like that kind of stuff. I'm so to, VD, I'm, I'm can I give you 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 know I don't rate England. I I don't rate England. Uh, I just never have only because. It's more of like Portugal has dominated England in every tournament that we played. We always beat England. So it's just something that like when Portugal plays Germany or Portugal plays Italy, I'm scared to death. Like we can't fucking mm-hmm. beat those teams. We just no, I, I know the feeling as a fan. I know. It, yeah. I know so so but I do have to give some credit. I've done some research going into this. Southgate has done a good job with that team. They made the finals of the Euro 2020, obviously at home. They got every home game fine. Mm-hmm. But they did make the semifinals of the 2018 World Cup. So England mm-hmm. notoriously has not been a great tournament team. They have all these players that come from the Premier League, and I don't think they really give a fuck. I think for a long time, a lot of those guys just didn't give a fuck when they put on that shirt. And I think Southgate has changed that a little bit. I think the key to, to England, the key that will really scare them is if Sancho and Phil Foden make Foden. the next step yeah. to take over that team. Those are the two guys. They have to take over. they got to stop dicking around with Sterling and, and those other guys. Kane is still Kane. That's fine. But I think it's Foden has got to be the engine. If he's not the engine, and I still don't understand how Trent Alexander Arnold doesn't start or can't like make that like that blows my fucking I think he mind. Does. No, he has not under Southgate. Oh, it's still Kyle Walker. It's still Kyle Walker. It's yeah. still been Kyle Walker. Like I, I, I'll, I won't understand that. I don't get that. He, but he I think to me the. Played. The key to me is Foden, Didi. Foden makes that next step and, and takes over that team in midfield. England's going to be super dangerous. I think so. I, with England, it's tough because everybody wants to play Grealish, but when you play Grealish, you have to play a very specific way. Otherwise, he's kind of useless. I agree with you. I think Foden is the key. He's been playing so well recently. So well. He kind of had his shot early on in the Euros, and he really didn't do dick. But, you know, it's going to be a lot different. It's going to be mid season, so it'll be interesting to see who's in how, form. Who's in form, how much that affects it because. It's a it's a it's a debate you can have. Do you go with informed players or do you play, you know, forever? I think England was criticized for being kind of just an all-star team of English players yep. rather than managing it like a club. And Southgate seems to have really gotten away from that. So he's gonna have some tough decisions to make, but I totally agree with you. Foden is like the Stockport Iniesta. I'm the most excited to see him play in this World Cup because I think he'll have a chance to like kind of take over the tournament now will he do it i don't know i think i think vd's point about like the way south gate like approaches like the team now is is like more correct than like what david said about england like not giving a fuck i i think like say like 
in in 06 or like 2010 England trots their guys out there they tr- trots know, their guys out they they, they just they, sent no, out Gerard they sent no. out Gerard and Lampard and like hey figure it out and it's like no yeah, these yeah. two don't play and, well together they and, don't play and, well together and played skulls out of position all that kind of stuff yeah but like but I also think that like I, like they go in there you know, like, I'll just you know, whatever like Joe Cole goes in there and he thinks he's better than other people because they play at Chelsea they play in the Champions League they do this stuff and it's and I think it took that like that English golden generation like thought you know, thought they were better than and won nothing for it. And this one is, is working hard. They're playing like a certain, like they're playing a good style of football. And now like they're not really reaping rewards, but they're making finals, making semifinals and able to make deep runs. I mean, in in England actually won a penalty shootout. I mean, that'd been fucking years since that happened. So even you bring up the penalty shootout, there is such an amazing pressure around England and the horrible disappointments they've had that I think they've kind of broken by getting to the Euro finals and by the last World Cup. I think there's a lot less pressure of like early exit. Can we, are we not going to get out of the group? There's less of that. It's like the, it's a young team. Um, They have a little bit of confidence now, you know, they had the good run in the Euros. So that to me from an outsider looking in seems like it's not as heavy on them anymore. And then I think you're, I mean, you'll never catch me uh, defending the quote unquote golden generation. We were sold mm-hmm. a bill of goods. Uh, most of them were frauds. I mean, Rooney's an incredible player, but like just the white pillow. That, yeah. The white pillow. Relax. But, Relax. So you won't, you won't kill. Oh, we don't need to get into this with Dave. Yeah. He's a Rooney yeah. hater. He's a skull. I'm not hater. a Rooney hater. It's just, all right, we're not going to do this right now. That's for a we're different show. This. We're, we're going to do that right now. We're going to we're gonna do that in a different show. So that's I do want to talk special. about. I want to talk about the the schedule though, really quick for us here in the states. Okay, I touched on it last episode. I was a little off on the times yeah. uh, because of daylight. Oh, savings. Were you really? Because I've been telling everybody those times. I know. No. Me too. I told- so <laughs> all right. So I was close. I was close. I said six nine and noon. It's five eight and eleven because uh, nah, at, at, no two o'clock. Yeah, yes, it plays two o'clock. No, and Here's then there's wrong. a fourth game. I missed a fourth game. There's a fourth game. There's four games every day in the first round. In the That's first not round, this for four- me. Yeah, so it's 5 a.m. will be the early, but the USA, all right, the schedule is USA Black Friday yeah. against England. Yeah. I have, a, I mean, that's going to be the most watched game in the history of American soccer, correct? It's got to be. Two yeah. o'clock on yeah. Black Friday against England in a World Cup. I no mean, one's working. So. No yeah. one's working. It's, it's, there's no football on. The football yeah. is Saturday and Sunday and the day before on Thanksgiving. Like that is gonna be to me. That's that the the ratings for Fox are gonna be fucking outlandish, outlandish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a like, game. And you're playing England. Like that's it's a natural. You're gonna have fucking uh, you know casuals tuning in and, and on Twitter and oh, shit. Oh yeah, that day. for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then and, for me and Buddy, whoever, whoever did a semester like in England, will be fucking watching like grabbing. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right, we we all have you. Well, me and Buddy have USA, England. VD has England and maybe USA coming out of it. I think USA ties England that day. I've heard so many people saying it's not even going to be a game. I, I think that's crazy. I think we, I'm with you, Buddy. England will play, which will let USA counterattack, which is what the USA wants to do. Uh, yeah. I could see that hopefully being an entertaining game, though, like a 2-2 sort of deal. Um, I, I think that's going to be a fun day. And we don't here's have to, the thing, we don't have to get – oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, VD. Here's the thing I'll say about America and tell me if I'm wrong – they're in a position where it's tough when you're like a um, smaller club, quote unquote, where it's like you can't get behind the like if you lose the first game, it is like really tough to dig yourself. You really. Yeah. So it's like it's tough to predict these groups because of that. But if you can just stay like draws, draws, maybe steal a win here. But just losing a game, like especially early on, I think can really crush you that's any uh, that's anyone in this in in yeah, this tournament yeah. you lose the first yeah. game it's man it's rough rough but on, yeah. uh, you know i obviously like the the opposite side of that coin is is also true though if like you you win two nothing yeah. versus wales or versus scotland you can go in draw england and then you know exactly what you have to do versus iran last day of the group and in, in which true. maybe the easiest match in the group to get out of i will say like just we don't have to talk about us at us in english tactics like six months before the world cup or whatever but like i think i think the way that england plays too with their back three will let us's like like midfield oh 
they might just have more bodies there. Like if, and especially if Foden's one of the guys like dependent on winning the ball back, that that could be useful for. Oh, the just get me, get me Pulisic versus Maguire one on one. That it's just like make it happen. I I'm, don't expose yourself because Maguire plays great for England. So all you I know, Buddy keeps telling me that I hate, I hate taste, Maguire. Don't have it. I hate Maguire too, but he he is a different human when he puts on the England kit. So, yep. um. Yep. And Stones', right, so, Stones his recovery pace helps him a lot. That's something he doesn't have at United. Yeah. 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 All, right. All right. So let's move on to Group C, buddy. So Group C is Argentina's group. That's Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. Uh, another surprising thing I saw looking at the rankings, Mexico is the ninth-ranked team in the world. That's, yeah, don't that's look at those bananas, rankings. They, don't they look at the rankings. Think. I watched, yeah. Who did I watch them play recently? I watched them play a couple times. Dude, played. USA, they, they were lucky that yeah, you, USA yeah. should they beat them 2 nothing in, in Azteca. Mexico stinks. They so, can't so it, score it, goals. And, and they VD's, cannot score goals. And VD's ranked, uh, uh, FIFA ranks, USA's 24th. Where's Mexico? 54th? Oh, Mexico? Yeah. Like, they are <laughs> terrible. I mean, there's, and I know, like, I hate to say it, they're relying on Raul Jimenez for goals, but, like, he's not the player he was. No. Injury, so. They don't have pace up top. They don't have pace up top. They don't. And, like, I and, watch them play. It's just – it's so – they get to that final third, and there's just nothing. There's no creativity. There's They have nothing. And, and when they get their chances, they're wild, dude. Chucky, Chucky misses every shot he takes, dude. They, yeah. They, yeah, it's just – it's so bad. Dude, they so better bad. they better fucking beg Chicharito and Carlos Velo. They better beg them to come I, back. I saw – it might have been Dispossessed Cranks who said that, it was, where it's like Mexico can't score goals. Here's Here is a guy who can't stop scoring goals, and they want nothing to do with Chicharito. It's okay. Yeah. Well, like, like, it, yeah. Like, like, have fun, you know? Yep. But. All right. So I, I I think that obviously Argentina comes out of that group. Uh, I think I'm going Poland. I think that Same. Lewandowski, like Teams that like is that just are a, scary. Teams like scary. That are scary. They're gonna, they, they're every, gonna play behind the ball. They're gonna play organized. And if they get a chance and they take it, you're you're in trouble. And, and listen, is there trouble. anyone that you'd rather have taking one chance, two chances a game than that fucking guy? Yeah. Exactly. No. No, you're right. You know. And they, and VD, I don't know if you watch Poland play. They played their whole game as they should catered to getting him like they oh, yeah. everything they do is is crosses and 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 setting him up everything that yeah. they do I, I wonder if poland could be a little bit better like kind of a la portugal in the, the euro final like when ronaldo got hurt i wonder if they'd be better like not like if they didn't play that way if they just no. played the fucking no. game and like let him score no. goals but he's no. he's their whole team he really is B- yeah Buxa gets some minutes but he doesn't he's not yeah that's like, crazy that a forward in the new england revolution is like going to be playing like in a world cup for a european team i know like, seriously, that's crazy maybe, maybe until the shows you how far mls has come up to be totally honest with you yeah all right yeah. so th- i think all that right. i think that i think that group's fairly like obviously it's Gonna be come down to Mexico, Poland, but we all have Argentina, and then Messi will choke in like the quarterfinals or something like that. Exactly. I, yeah. I worry about uh, the Polish guys in the desert. I do worry about that. Oh yeah. Oh that's yeah, actually, dude. That's good actually call, a, VD. A good point. Yeah, they, they are could easily... super white. They're gonna be getting yeah. sunburned. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's and they then, and then right. one goal scored easily. And then by the way, so speaking on that, you're not wrong. Then Saudi Arabia, sneaky like for, sort of I'm play saying. in that group. These, yeah. All these African teams, all these Middle Eastern teams, you have to give them just a yep. little. Nah, because even look, it's a different sport and stuff. But I notice it when teams, when like um, northeastern teams come to play Miami in yep. football in Miami, there is a difference where like fourth quarter you could really see it. So that is not it's it's not a made up thing. It's a real advantage. Yeah, good good call, VD on that. All right, what do you got next, buddy? So the, the next group is France's group. That's it. So it's France. There's another playing game. It's Peru versus Austria. And then it's the winner of that versus the United Arab Emirates. So I, I, I think probably – oh, not Australia. I think it's Australia. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, Shout out, yeah. Benners. Yeah. Then the third third team is Denmark, and the fourth team is Tunisia, who I actually think – I think Tunisia comes out second in this group. I don't know. Like, I, I don't Damn. think – I don't think for another reason other than, like, they're in Africa – Han- Hannibal Medjbury plays there. He's a, he's a United prospect. He's 18. He's nasty. Like, I love watching Hannibal play. I've watched Tunisia play probably too much on my weekends at work um, during like AFCON and stuff. But I like France. And then, the de- and then back to back to VD's point Denmark, how are they going to hold up those those poor guys? Although Christian yeah. Eriksen, like, like seeing him back on the World Cup or in the World Cup after yeah. what happened to him in the Euro is going to be very cool. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. He's but, been playing great. Yeah. But back to VD's point, 105 degrees, and these guys like are coming and off of playing in Europe, where it's going to be, you know, 50, 55 degrees in, in November. 
You know what I mean? So yeah. good call, VD, on that. You kind of yeah. got me thinking now capping this stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a factor. Um, but yeah, this so group, I mean, France dominates France, this group. France, Denmark's a, France. Kind of a sneaky good team. I'm, I'm going to put Denmark as well. Um, I wouldn't want to play Denmark, to be honest. I wouldn't want them in my group. Yeah, no, always a solid team. They have poor, they've given Portugal fits and qualifiers through the years. They're always a good team. Who's the kid they play up top? Paulson, right? The Paulson, kid, I believe. Yeah, like a yeah. hard worker, right? Yeah, he's pretty yeah. good. And then, um, and, and, and I agree. France, so let's talk about France really quick. Like, the defending World Cup champion coming into this. Um, Paul Pogba, I think this is going to be a big m- time for him. Because obviously, I think he's going to leave United in the summer. Okay, he yeah, has to leave United. He's already left, yeah. Yeah, like he is such like a guy that we don't talk about now as a top five player. But on the right team in the right system, like when he plays for the France national team, he's in his natural position. They basically just let him run the midfield, which is what he should be doing. Mm-hmm. And and he dominates fucking games. And his, his thing with Benzema and Mbappe up front. And they're just loaded, man, everywhere. That team, yep. we talked about it a couple weeks ago as far as, like, you could have two national teams. France could have two national teams. They are fucking yeah. loaded. Loaded. They're, they're the perfect storm to let Pogba go off. Like we, we talk about every time we talk about international games. They're slower. It's like it's like playing in Italy. He has more room. He has Conte behind him. He doesn't have to worry about any of the stuff. Winning the ball. Do. He doesn't have to win the fucking ball yeah. at all. Conte well, just wins every fucking ball for him and feeds mm-hmm. him. He's he's scanning everything the whole time. makes makes one pass over the top or one one pass through the lines. And I, and I think he's, and I think he, with he's France special is, when he plays for them, he really is. Yeah, and, and I think with France too, they're just to me the most athletic fucking soccer team. Like they're fucking so fast on the counter, and then they're even defenders winning the ball. They're just they they yeah. feel like you're playing against fourteen or fifteen guys on the fucking field when you watch France play. They, they yeah. France reminds me of like of like the old school Germany like the like the when Germany was really at its peak like two thousand like a machine a machine yeah just everybody goes a hundred percent all the time you don't have to worry about that yep but, all right so we think France takes that group easily so buddy what's next all right, so so next is is the group that I think is a group of death that's the Spain's group so Spain it's New Zealand or Costa Rica Germany and Japan yeah um, I mean Spain and Germany together uh, absolutely Japan, I, I'd be shocked. Hard out. Japan's a hard out, and obviously, I mean, Costa Rica gonna, or New Zealand are yeah. should get – no, but either one of those teams should get stomped by – Last by, time Costa Rica was in, a, was in a group of death, they won the group. I understand. Just, that was novice. I, they made the quarterfinals. Yeah. I know. that's. Uh, I, I'd be shocked, shocked if it's not Spain and Germany coming out of yeah, this group. Same, same. I, I yeah, think Spain I, is – Spain is a low-key, like, watch out for them to win the World Cup. It depends who they play. I mean, they're kind of stuck in between two generations right now a little bit. Like, they have a couple young kids that I, I don't know if they're going to play. I haven't watched them play recently. I don't know if they're playing for the national team. But definitely a lot of experienced veterans who have played in a lot of World Cups before. So, you always got to watch out for Spain. Pedri and, like, Busquets side by side. Like, Fati yeah. going up top. You know, um, Farron Torres is in form. Right? I mean, it's, it's, we're talking about seven months from now. But they're they're definitely. Who's dangerous. that other little guy they have, too, that that looks super young? Uh, he plays for Barca. Gavi? Oh, oh sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. You so, this is, why we, not, need, not right, this is why we need young Pedro. leg on. <laughs> Let yeah. me see. I'll never say that. No, yeah, this kid got he, <laughs> He's like eight. He's 17, but he's been playing really well in Barca. So I doubt he'll play. But who knows if you're 18 and in form next year. And in form. Play. A- absolutely, yeah. dude. And, and especially yeah. Luis Enrique, their coach, is not scared to play young players as well. Yeah. So, like, that's what you want out of your national team coach. Like, you fucking yeah. let him go. They're, and then they're Ger- so, so well, like, so well prepared to play. Too. And, not, and, 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 and now watch out with Germany. New coach. They've been winning their games again. They're getting their groove back. That team, when you get them in a tournament, that team knows how to fucking play in tournaments. That country, the, the that perfect country. tournament team, the perfect. So tournament they are. Do. Yep. They don't make don't make mistakes. Like their midfield is solid. Like wingbacks are solid. You you always solid. know how Spain's gonna play, and you always know how Germany's gonna play. Like they have an identity that their players kind of fit around, and like it's how they're raised to play. Where it's not this. It's not really the same as all these other countries necessarily, but Mm -hmm. Spain and Germany, you always know what you're going to get. 1,000%. All right, VD, uh, buddy, next group? So next group is Canada's group. That's the group with Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia in it. This Uh, is the group of death to me. This is the group of death to me. Canada is your four seed. Canada is your four seed. This is the group of death to me. Croatia made the last World Cup finals. They're old, so I don't see them going far. I actually don't see them coming out of this group, personally. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then you said Belgium and who else? I'm sorry. Morocco. Morocco. So, like, so that's Morocco. why I think, I think Morocco's like. It's like, always they, a sneaky good African team. Always. Yeah, but like I just like I'm not I'm not as scared of of them. And I think I think the stage like and maybe I'm wrong, but like I think the stage or I'm hoping the stage is too big for Canada and like and they just they just go there and like, like you said, okay, them being their four seed like maybe maybe it's like a, them being underrated a little bit, but like it's their first big tournament. They're going across the country. They're they okay. They they have they are different makeup say than. The Denmark team than than the Netherlands team where it's just a bunch of white guys who are gonna fry, but like they're still not used to like this this heat like like playing tough games like this. I I you know I'm no one's a bigger fan of the killer of a killer Kowalski in VA, but like I just I don't see it happening for them. I mean, I just think that when you have a, a player of Davies' stature, like he can be the best player on the field pretty much mm-hmm. every game except for like the Belgium game. In my opinion, okay. Yeah, that's so, probably true. And so when David you have – and Jonathan David, once you've got players of that caliber and then everyone else just buys in and plays hard, like it's a tournament. Like that's – you need – they get like one point in the first game or something like that. Or they beat Croatia, let's say, right? Like watch and out it, after that. Watch isn't out. This, isn't, first this the first, isn't this the first time they qualified for a World Cup in a long-ass time? Or 86. Since 86. Yeah. yeah. So like you don't want to play teams like that. You just don't. Nope. You don't. I agree. I agree. I, I think Croatia. I think Canada. What? So th- this is my prediction. In this group. It's Canada, Belgium. I, I I have Belgium, Croatia, but I that could easily happen. Yep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's a tough group. I mean, I call it. I think Belgium comes out on top, but I I, I respect Canada and I I still respect Croatia. I'm not going to write them off what, quite like Daver. Would it Would it surprise you guys too if this was if this is the turn and like obviously it can happen to anybody at any time where Belgium but, crashes? Yeah, where it's over for Belgium, dude. Because it, it's they they they're, they're old to, man. Yeah, they're, they're old. Supposed, it's supposed to be their time. The last three tournaments, it hasn't happened. They they're the best Belgian player, like. Or, or the guy who's supposed to be carrying this generation, Eden Hazard, is eating like McDonald's somewhere. Like Kevin, yeah. Kevin De Bruyne is maybe well, one of the maybe the top five players in the world. Uh, Lukaku is not scoring goals, but Witzel, Witzel's a Witzel's a shadow of himself. Yeah, like no, no, they're old, I mean. man. They're old. It, it wouldn't and be surprised the, if if the, if you know, like Canada plays in first game. I wouldn't be surprised Canada beats them one nothing. Old teams too in the tournament in this heat, like the wheels can fall off quickly. Oh, I mean, even yep. uh, even De Bruyne, like he can't. He's not really a ninety-minute player as much anymore. I think yeah, even in not. the Euros, he wasn't really even playing. And like, minutes. I mean, you can't be starting Eden Hazard and thinking like this is going to work. Oh, no, out. I don't. Know. I don't even know if he'll be there. To Same, be honest, yeah, yeah. I think he's. I mean, maybe he'll be. Isn't he about to have an ankle surgery or something? I mean, his career is over. And, I love who, him, but who scores goals for them in that case? Rom can't score goals. He's overweight again. Like he'd like like what? Where do they come from? And just when you've gone this many tournaments, I think guys are just like done with each other too. Like they're just done with each other. Here's what I will say though: they're they're always going to be defensively solid. They have good defensive players. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like if if Lukaku's not scoring, who's really going to score? But you also have to think. You also have to think if if he catches if like he gets on one of his little runs. Runs, of course, they're scary. Any any team with a striker like that, even you know if they're not playing as well as we've seen them play in the past. It, tor- like, to me, a lot of that goes out the window for tournaments. In tournaments, and, and, yep. And it, where did yeah. Lukaku thrive? In Italy, like, we've, we've made the comparison yeah. so many times. It'll be slow. Like, he'll he'll be, yeah. like, like you said about Davies, when when Davies said, like, when they when they basically, when they play anybody, he'll be the best attacking player on the field. All he's got to yep. do is post somebody up and turn on him, and it's and it's one nothing. And that, I mean, that, that run he made against the USA in, like, the 2010 World Cup, I still, like, it's crazy. Like, he bodied, They're, like, four dudes. It was nuts. Yeah. yeah. There's also something to be said for like a lot of these dudes on Canada are never going to have played someone as high quality as him, even if he's not in form. Like I'm assuming mm-hmm. a lot of the Canadian players are MLS players and lower yeah. league players. So it's like an yeah. exposure to kind of same with Croatia. It's an exposure to like skill levels and stuff that you just haven't really seen firsthand necessarily. Yep. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, buddy. Um. So uh, two more groups. Uh. The first of which is uh, Group G. That one is Brazil's group: Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Um, there's this might be the most lopsided group in the in the table. Like like there's nobody even close to Brazil in this group. Nobody like, close to Brazil. Yeah. Brazil should should romp this group. They never they, do though. They never. They never do. They never <laughs> they do. Never do. They, well, they and, don't know. Not anymore. They used to. They used well, to. Yeah. When I yeah, when yeah. I was a kid, 
when I was a kid, Brazil would just like this would if be you a got a point. Yeah. Oh, if you got a point against Brazil, dude, you were just fucking doing black backflips in a yeah. World Cup. They used yeah. to clown people. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not the same Brazil. To me, I, I feel bad saying it because one of my best friends is Brazil, and I, I told him to his face, I think they'll do well, but I lied. I, I don't see Brazil playing well here. They're a team to me where one bad result and, like, the whole team could just quit. Like, yes, yes. They, it, they just – No intestinal fortitude on that team anymore. None. 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 Yeah, de- none definitely not all. with two Manchester United players can make that team. Like, when Fred's, like, the heartbeat Fred, of, like, that Fred, midfield. Fred, it's I, insane. I love Fred. Fred's, insane. Fred's, in, Fred's in great form. Like, like he, he's easy to clown on. But, like, but like Fred and Telus are important players for them. You can't be great. like that. And then yeah. and then Neymar is just, like, I, it just that can't yeah. be, like, that can't be the leader of your team. Like, it he's just can't tubby, be. He's tubby, too, he, I think. I heard, he's, yeah. He's going with the PSG practices drunk, I read. Dude, when Brazilians, Brazilians prime, people got to remember this. Brazilians love to fucking party. Like, look, like, it's a cultural They're thing. They're wild. Cards. They're, they're wild, wild cards. cards. Mm-hmm. No, and when they turn 28, their careers are done. Look at it. Ronaldinho, fucking Rivaldo, the original Ronaldo. At 28, they look like they're 34. Like, that's what happens yeah. to them, bro. They've been playing every week for the last, like, 15 years at that point. And then they you know? slug 15 <laughs> beers and fucking Ch- Ch- uh, Shadaska after every fucking game, bro. Yeah, a but couple those, lines, those Brazilian, <laughs> yeah. Brazilian, The Brazilian League, too, is savage, if you've ever watched it. So oh, yeah. Those guys, they play, like, two or three years there in the beginning of their career. And it just and their legs are already years fucking off the years, their years of their lives. Yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah. It's facts. Yeah. But Brazil but, rocks I this know. group. I, I like Switzerland second place in this group. Teams like Serbia always scare me. Where... Almost, they knocked. They won. They they oh, won Portugal's team. group. They won yeah, Portugal's group. They're, they're gonna be defensively compact. They're gonna yep. play organized. They're hard men. They're fucking scared. They're like, hard they're men. Very, yeah, you're going up for a corner. Like you better be uh, careful on set pieces. Uh, they'll yep. steal one from mm-hmm. you. And then Switzerland too. Not a terrible team. Always organized. Always yeah. fucking organized. Yep. Yeah. I think this is – it's not a balanced group, but there's a – Brazil is clearly better than the rest of the teams. But the other three teams to me are all relatively kind of equal, um, going yeah. to be difficult me. teams. Yeah. I was yep. – tw- towards the end of that uh, – towards the end of the draw, I'm, I'm – like I, I kind of got my wish, which may, maybe like be careful what you wish for. But towards the end of the draw, I'm like, please, no African teams in that in that group too. Yeah. Because it's just like you you never know what you're going to get. African teams. Except, listen, Mike – Except for like, Mike, you're going to play so hard. Mike put it. Mike on the last show kind of said it. African countries, they're fucking wild cards too. Like they're wild yeah. cards, man. Like, oh yeah, and, they, and, they, they play they, a whole different style, you know. Yeah, you know? and and they can come out and like tease you and, and show great, or like you score a goal on them and they just fucking quit and fold right away. And and they can play shitty for seventy minutes and s- play one ball over the top and hit a post and in, and then so it's you yeah, know, you're going home. All right, last group, buddy. Last group is Davis group. That's uh, Let's Portugal, go. Portugal, Ghana. Who I was, who I am very scared of. Uruguay yes, and, and South Korea. So no, I actually, I should. No, I, I, this is this, this is, is my Max Daddy's group because those those are his second and third favorite teams. Uh, Portugal and South Korea. So <laughs> those are, those um, I, this is very close to me to being group of death because of how even pretty much all the teams are. Uh, listen, I love Portugal. I they they are the most talented VD. Thank you for saying that the other day. But they never play like it. So mm-hmm. this is a team they could in a tournament. Fernando Santos comes out. He's going to come out conservative. That's just the way the man fucking is. Okay. So if you do that, you're going to leave these teams in the game. And in any of these games, Portugal could win or lose or tie easily. Any of these three games easily. Yeah. I think, I think this new uh, formation we've seen from Sanchez since uh, Santos, excuse me, should totally stick though. Like you're not playing anybody where you need your two sixes. You're not playing anybody where you need to be overly defensive. They should be attacking. Sh- they should, should be attacking. You should play like, and we've, we've named the guys a hundred times. We're not going to name them again, but like, but they'll, they'll get their midfield back. Like, and they like, if they play, like they played these two playoff games, they'll have no problem making, making it through. And I, and I, I mean, I said on the show before, I think, Portugal with their talent playing the, the way that they did, I think that they can really be a problem in this World Cup. I think if they get out of this group, they're going to be a problem. But once again, South Korea is a team that they knocked us out of a World Cup before. Okay, South Korea, they play hard. That country plays hard. They play fast. They play their style of, of soccer, and it's organized. Uruguay is crazy organized in the back. Mm-hmm. They're almost impossible to fucking score on. And then you have the, the, the guys up top. Suarez is old, but so is Ronaldo, right? Yep. Suarez mm-hmm. is his last one. Uh, you have Darwin Nunez, who plays for Befica. Like they have talented, talented guys up front that can hit you on a counter attack, and they're going to be hard to break down. Maybe Portugal versus like France, 
England or the United States in the semis too. Like if you make it that, if, if make you make it that, it that far, far. why? And then and then Ghana, like you said, buddy, Ghana is a team that they win every youth fucking tournament. Now, are they sending twenty five year olds to an under eighteen <laughs> tournament? Maybe, maybe you know, maybe, know, yeah. maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay, was Freddie Adu fourteen? No fucking way. Okay, like no, and that's where he came from. Was Ghana. So, but they're a team that always has uber talent. Like they always win every youth cup. So, like they're a team that, like Buddy said, they're very fast and they're very physical as well too. So they're they're a dangerous team. But I'd be shocked if Portugal doesn't come out of this group. So VD, Portugal, they got to be careful of not falling into the trap of just playing a Portuguese all star team, which is is easy to do just because of the quality and depth of players you have, but. I don't know. Is there going to be like pressure to play Ronaldo since this is pr- he's, he's probably yeah no no yeah VD he's not coming he's not not I don't disagree he's not with not Buddy though I don't disagree with Buddy though where it's like next Euros come around I think he's still lingering he's not, around he so no no Euros record, yes Euros yes VD he's Cup, saying World, World Cup, Cup. Yeah. he said four Yo. years after no no I'm, I'm, I don't there's, know. there's I don't no know. reason he can't be on the bench if he accepts it dude. Like yeah, there's no yeah. reason and, and it would be here in the united states you know you you yeah. know he'd love to be in like miami and shit for the like uh, yeah. the first round game he'll be, play, he'll be yeah. playing for inter miami anyway so anyway yeah true. exactly yeah. true yeah true um yeah. all right so so let me talk about the schedule for us portuguese people out there who listen thanksgiving morning 11 a.m kickoff is portugal's first game i'm gonna tell you right now thanksgiving at my madrina's house is gonna be <laughs> fucking lit we are oh, gonna yeah. be drunk early Early, you, aren't, me and, you aren't wait. You aren't waking up in time for the America England game the next day. Yeah, win, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eleven is like we're gonna be taking shots at nineteen twenty at fucking nine thirty in the morning on Thanksgiving morning. Then we are gonna be lit. Me and the can cousins are gonna be. Uh, first game, if I'm not mistaken, Ghana. buddy, can you take a look? Ghana. Okay, there you go. That's so, a nice that's first not easy. game. Yeah, that's a nice. Fit. I would rather play them first. I would rather. Yeah, play I would too. I would too. Up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then also too, buddy. I think Ghana will play, whereas Uruguay and, and South Korea are way more like organized and disciplined. Where I think Ghana will try to play with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South Korea. I just is think you're, you're more in. likely to get goals against Ghana. Like Ghana, I love African teams, but their their defensive um organization. They're not organized. No, it's very, very suspect, but yep. you know, they'll try to hit you on the counter and stuff. But yeah, I think it play if it's tough if you play South Korea first, they park the bus and it, yep. it's nil nil, and then like that's kind of deflating to you. I think it's perfect to play Ghana first, yeah, try to you, you'll be able to play freely, get some goals, get some momentum. Um, yeah, but that all right, so let's. So let's transition. We did our first round. We'll we'll get back to the World Cup in another show before we get in. We'll pick winners. We'll go draws. We'll do all that. That was just like our initial reaction to the groups. Let's transition to the Premier League, okay? So this is like Buddy, VD. Like we have group chats where we talk about this stuff. Uh, I thought it was a great weekend in the Prem. Uh, I thought Tottenham had the most impressive performance of the weekend. Uh, I want to get your feel on where Tottenham is right now with Antonio Conte, who I thought Manchester United should have hired. I was telling Buddy on that on previous episodes. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a great hire for them. Uh, does Kane stay next year? I think that's the biggest thing. Does this convince him? That, is he hanging around? Or is he no. gone to Man City or Man United? Well, I, I don't know if he goes to City because they've paid a hundred. I don't think they're yeah. Like, yeah, it, I don't know And if they, they want they City. want Holland and stuff. But, like, I think I think he does move on. Although I guess it has to be the market for him because if, if whoever comes in for United doesn't want him as doesn't want a twenty nine year old number nine, although he still scores a bunch of goals. But we were they're, we were shitting on him earlier in false nine, but like he's 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 like he's back, back. Goal he's back on yeah, form. Yeah, yeah. there's but only I, what four or five teams in the world that can buy him, right? Madrid, seriously? they're not gonna want him. They're gonna get him nope. Mbappe. Man mm-hmm. City, I'm not sure they're gonna want him anymore. So like it it really leaves a very short list of clubs, and I don't know maybe. I think there is a chance that he ends up staying it's just saying, because they can't. I agree. I, there's not a there's not a huge market for him at all. And then if Conte can get them into the top four, if they're back in Champions League football next year, and they say, "Hey, we're gonna go buy a couple of guys, we're gonna go get a couple of guys," they went to a Champions League final a couple of years ago. Like yeah. I I, yeah. I just I think if Conte drags them to the top four and the way they're playing, their signings, Son and him are lethal up front. Those two are mm-hmm. lethal up front. And then the new kid that they got who's been scoring goals, too. I, I forget. Uh, I was Lissessi. watching it. I, yes, yeah, exactly. He's a, he's, been, he's a good player. He's a good player. Good player. They got Deli Ali. They got that fucking cancer gone. That that cancer's out of the locker room. <laughs> that guy's so bad. That's another English fucking creation. The fucking English media. Guy has one good season, and you guys are calling him the fucking English Maradona. It's fucking insane. 
what you okay, guys do. Well, yeah, your Portuguese media told me Fabio Silva is the next Ronaldo. He, he, he can't even I mean, we, him, we exaggerate so. too. We exaggerate too. We exaggerate too. <laughs> I'm sure he's a nice but, guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a great guy. All right, so – so the big thing in the, in the prep, who's going to win the league? Man City and Liverpool are in a fucking battle. Who's winning the league this year? City. City for me. For me, it's Because United's going to beat Liverpool at home at, at Anfield to help City, unfortunately. That's what's going to happen. I'm just I'm glad that it's a race, you know. I'm just glad yeah. the race is on because for a totally. while it looked like there might not be one. It was um, looking like Spain. It was looking like I, Spain. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think I'm glad uh that all the races are on. There's there's a race race for for one and two, race for top 4, race race for relegation, like who's getting out, all that. That's that's like that result. I think Newcastle's safe now, but that that's what that result was like so shocking to me. Cuz Newcastle yeah. had been they had not not had been flying. They're still they're still like, and Newcastle. took the lead in that game and took yeah, the lead in that game. Yeah, they're still Newcastle. They're still managed by Eddie Howe. Like they're not gonna. Yeah. they're not like like that exhilarating. But like they they had been playing pretty well, and Tottenham just came back and just said like nope. Matt, like uh, I I don't know if they if if everybody says Doherty, you know what I mean, or Doherty, whatever. But he's scoring yeah. goals for Tottenham, dude. Like I'm like yeah. what? Like where is this shit coming from? I wish he never left Wolves. He he's he's a clutch player, but um. Yeah, they, like you, there's a race at the bottom. I think we know definitely Norwich is going to go down. Burnley or Watford are kind of slugging it out. And yeah. Everton, I would love to see Everton. Go down. So that, that would be a. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm so glad you said that because because they 100 percent are going down. There's nothing that can stop it. It's they are they are sinking ship FC. Like um, I think Everton comes back up when Rooney manages them and, and takes them from the bottom up. But but anyway, nice, nice story. Yeah, it's, it'd be yeah nice. that's so what, it's, so it's, so it's, Lampard it's, Lamp, Lamp is Lampard just a shit manager at this I'm, point? Are okay. we gonna? That, that's why I was glad BD Absolutely. brought up Everton because he is because such I wanted a to say that. Yeah, so he's so such a fraud. He's he's such a fraud. He had an average season at Derby and then gets the Chelsea job, and everybody's like he's gonna do fine. So here's what I what I wanted to say about them. Like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a bad manager. He should never manage in England again. The same should have been true for Frank Lampard. How the fuck yes. did he get that yeah. job, dude? Yeah, like like they were both being mentioned for that job, and Ole was smart enough to like distance himself or or or, or obviously maybe it was a lie. But like, how the fuck? Did Frank Lampard get another job in England? And he was he was so shit. They spent they spent like 150 million dollars, and and his team got worse. Like, and then as soon as yeah. he got fired, they win the Champions League final. Yeah, ex- yeah, yeah exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, he, they assemble this be- this wonderful squad, and all it takes is a beautiful fucking German genius to come in and like win the Champions League. All it took yeah. was a, was a manager, and they win the Champions League. That's ridiculous. Yeah, just bad at your job. So, and then what do you think about Leeds now looking with Jesse March as the American manager? And there's a lot of people that thought March was going to get the Everton job. And what do you think of Everton now? Like, Leeds looks like they're getting out of uh, the relegation battle. Look like they're pulling themselves out now. Uh, he's got them to, way more organized. Thanks to our Raul Jimenez red card. I mean, that's too soon. I can't talk yeah. about Leeds. Still. I can't <laughs> talk about Leeds has most games played. Everton has still has three games at hand on Leeds. But, but I, oh, I yeah, do, I didn't I even notice that. that. Safe. Yeah. So Leeds Leeds has played 31 games, Everton 28, Burnley also 28, Watford and Norwich both on 30 games. Norwich But do you have any now. faith that Everton can get points though? Like I just don't see how that no. team gets points. Let no, me, I let, think they're going let's down. Let's see who they play. They play they play Burnley tomorrow, which is an unbelievably huge game. Then they play United and hopefully United wins, but like who the fuck knows? They yeah. Liverpool. Leicester. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They're, they're, they're toast, bro. They're down. So so buddy, so let's talk them. about your let's talk about your United. What yeah, like to. what needs to happen? Like what what's wrong with that fucking club? So I, I other mean, than everything. There, there's nothing tell- new. Go ahead, you need a manager. You need a yeah. manager. You don't yeah. have a manager. This, How this, care, like... this caretaker shit is insane to me. Like, oh, come here for six months, buddy. Like, I don't understand yeah. that at all. Like, I, I'd, I'd never understood that. It's, I mean, it's, it, it, it and th- like, it's a big mistake, but they had to make it off of what happened with Ole. Cause if, cause if they fire Ole, let Michael Carrick manage, he manages three months and it's fine. Then, they hire him again, and it's a mistake because he's not. It's still like not his level. He just got the group like feeling good and playing well and stuff. Yeah. So their their mistake is being like is like they're just gonna maybe sound like I'm, everything I say sounds stupid, but like their mistake is like being gentlemen. Their mistake is doing the right thing. What they should have done in November is pay IX ten million dollars for Eric Ten Hag. Get your manager, get him in. Sure what do you? Th- sure, it what takes do you a while th- to get going. But like, but but they wanted to be respectful. They but, love buddy, being a star. They have a good working relationship. They so they wanted to wait. How mad are you going to be when Sir Alex Ferguson puts his foot down 
and, and, and they like, signed Pochettino. They, and they signed and they signed Pochettino over this guy. How I'm mad gonna, are you gonna be? I'm gonna be deleting a lot of tweets to tell you that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I I will be. I, I, I see the writing on the wall. Everyone's yeah. saying that he wants the job and that Sir Alex is really pushing behind the scenes for him to get the job. I think I will be very mad, but I think the club will have and should have learned like from their mistakes like around Sir Alex. Like he Sir Alex told them and, and David right. Moyes. Nope, nope. Yeah, no, nope, but that's that's not even the point about Moyes. He did pick he did handpick Moyes. He he handpicked Moyes over Pep Guardiola. He said don't pick don't pick Pep because he is a, a mercenary. Okay. Ten if a mercenary stays ten years, gets yeah. you the Champions League final, gets you FA Cups, gets you six like EPL, dude. If they like, get you probably, one trophy, it's worth it. Like yeah, what do you mean? especially with, especially really... where they want. Oh no, no, hundred yeah. no, percent. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, like Jose this, Mourinho's this, a mercenary. This, Mourinho's no, no, the king yeah. of the mercenaries. No, no but get this, it? this mercenary yeah. is different than all of the other ones. Like Pep is like like he's the greatest manager like of this generation. Like he's he's By the far. best manager since since like Jose. So so they miss out on him. And then as as part of that, like I don't I don't really know what happens with Klopp, but Klopp's a fucking socialist. There's no way he's going to the biggest club in the world. He'd ra- even though Liverpool is just as big, but he'd rather go to like a club that needed more help, like that needed like a bigger thing. So they, if if you listen to Sir Alex again and you get burned again, like what like what are you supposed to do? And he's got his fucking minions. Obviously, everybody's saying like, oh well, we really want Poach. Like Poach, in my opinion, has proven nothing. All all to me, he's proved is that he can't handle it. Ole made him like always the gym teacher. He Ole made him look like a gym teacher. He came to United in his funeral suit, all in black, dude. Like he's he's like Mauricio Pochettino shouldn't be close to like a big club. And for some reason, he's he's the same as these other guys. He gets like they they play flashy football, so they get more jobs. And I like okay, yeah, I don't I don't understand. Yeah. It. Is it time to let Alex just? You know, be quiet. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's a delicate situation because yep. he is obviously such a legend. But I mean, it just feels like it's the same thing with United over and over. Where if, to me, it feels like they really need fresh blood and fresh thinking in the club. Yeah. And I mean, me and Buddy were talking about it before you came on, David, because you were late. Um, but there is just <laughs> such a um, even worse than NFL, worse than any sport. It's like the same managers get just retried and retried over and over and. I don't know. I just think they need fresh blood. I think they kind of need to reinvent the way they play. Uh, they're to me, they try to like um, just be a relic of the past, where they're still trying to do it the Fergie way. And like, yep, football has changed so much, even in the last three to five years. It's, yep, it's a different sport now, and I don't know why there's such an unwillingness um in football to have new fresh blood managers what it's like you see it now in the nfl it used to be like that but now everybody wants a 30 year old boy yep, genius college, like, yeah. yeah but you was, but you can even see it with lodge like he's coming to wolves and he had very little experience but like you i feel like you just need someone with mm-hmm. a vision because they have so, the resources to make that vision come to life but it's just, everything seems so stale so, so here's my issue with United, like outside looking in, is like you, they look like they just want to buy their way out of it because they have so much money or, or whatever the case may be. And I think they need to do like an Arsenal or like a Liverpool did a few years ago and just reset, get their manager and play a system and start buying players or grooming players for said system. If you miss the Champions League a year or two or whatever, or you finish seventh or eighth place, yeah, it's going to suck. But right yeah. now, would you rather be Arsenal or would you rather be Man United? I'd rather be Arsenal. Arteta yeah. is at least like... No. You you have a vision, you have a plan. They're they're like not all the way there, but like they have a style of play now that they play, and now every they're buying players to fit his style of play. No, I I I one hundred percent agree. And United's biggest problem is like their owners and like their the people who make it and like their decision makers there because they don't like unlike other clubs. So like United's owner, I mean, we, how many times have I bitched about them? But they're they're so basic, dude. Like they're obviously Americans, they don't understand how it works. But they're like, oh, we just care about making top four. We just care about Champions League. Every time we don't, we'll pump a hundred million dollars back in because Champions League is where the money's at. But if if you spent the money once to put in the system that they that they say they're they're gonna do this time, which like again, I'm just gonna assume that it's Ten Hag. So like they they implement Ten Hag, which if you've seen Rag, Ragnick after the game this week, he said like the reason United in, uh, is so far behind City and Liverpool is because they don't do what City and Liverpool does, which is by by like exclusively to the system. Don't buy Di Maria because he's the best player available. That doesn't yes. matter, dude. Yep. You buy you buy players who can play in the system. You buy players who want to play hard. You buy players who 
And like, like the other problem is their wage structure, bro. Marcus Rashford's on two hundred ninety thousand dollars a week, bro. Insane, like, insane. Like, there's no way that like that he, guy he, never, never, he, never in a million no, years. Like, I know, I know. He's he's no. a he, he's a top six player to me, but like he can, but like he's not a top two. You know, like he he belongs like at Spurs, but he can never go to Spurs because Spurs will never pay him like that because he's already right. made a ton of well, money. Well, it, co- yeah. it comes back to me to Fergie again because I remember Fergie saying like. Years ago, oh, Rashford is the will be the best English player of his generation. Like he was a a Ferguson guy. Yeah. So it's like you kind of it's a weird thing where there's just a lot of cooks in the kitchen there, and no one is really in charge with a clear vision. And I think until that changes, it's gonna be the same thing. You know, top top six finishes. You know, Mm -hmm. make a run here and there, but it's not gonna be uh the united that we knew and grew up with and the, the yeah, most like frustrating God. part is is implementing the system takes care of itself you implement the yeah. system you implement good scouts good football people you trust the glazers never have to go to england they just have to sign a few checks here and there and then eventually okay yes it'll be a hundred million net spend this year a hundred million net spend next year the year after the, the january after it's 30 million for a defense for a so for a defensive midfielder you've been tracking or right or a right back you've so, been so Nobody so to me, uh, the best the best run club in England for the last like few years, and I hate to say it because I hate him as a Red Sox owner, is Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool, like look what Liverpool does. Like Luis Diaz today scored against Benfica. Okay, that's like their fifth or sixth forward. That kid is nasty. I saw him in Portugal play for Porto. He's been scoring goals for Colombia. He's filthy. They go and get him in January for like 40, 45 million. They go get Jota last year, VD from Wolves for like forty mm-hmm. million. They could easily sell those guys now for 80, 90 million, no problem. They don't go get the hundred million dollar guy. Like, not even like not even like uh uh like City does with Grealish. They'll go spend a hundred million. Though mm-hmm. they don't do that. Like they don't do that, and it fits their system. Do you, and then these guys get there and they kill it. But do you give that credit to the club or because to me that's pretty much all club. That's club. Like, I, that's club. It's a hundred because yeah, if you think pre clop, like I mean, they were kind they were of in a United similar mistakes. a similar s- situation as United, exactly. Like yeah. whiffing on managers, and then every time you whiff on a manager, it's gonna set you back. But a year but VD, they, they your owner's Fowler. the owner the, the owner the owner's job is to pick the right manager. So you do have to give credit True. to the owner. Not, True. No, not even. I, I do you know? Know this, The owner's job is is to it, like pick good football people to make that decision. In my opinion, okay, right, well, right, yeah, that, that's a, yeah. that's a good like, point. Yeah. Like like. like the owner, like the owner's job, is to sign checks and like lift trophies. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. like, and even then, all right. So last, you know. So we we went a little long. We're gonna wrap it up here. I do have to say one final thing. Speaking of Liverpool, I talked about it. Befica, Liverpool today. Befica was robbed. Absolute penalty should have been called in the 75th minute. Would have tied the game two two. Uh, but credit to Liverpool. Befica played great today. Actually, at home, uh, they attacked. Befica did not sit back. They actually played with Liverpool. Uh, Befica is not the team that they have been. But to make the quarterfinals is huge for. Huge for us. A lot of money coming into the team. So hopefully they use it correctly. And Darwin Nunez is an absolute stud. If he's not in England in the next couple of years, that's the next guy that we're going to sell for like 80 or 100 million. The kid yeah, is an absolute good. fucking beast. He's coming to Wolves this summer. He's coming to Wolves this <laughs> summer. So are you guys ready to spend 80 or 100 million dollars? Are you there yet? I don't yeah. think we're I don't think we're there yet. But you think he's going to go for that much? Yeah, yeah like right he's now, will, he's scoring yeah. goals in Champions League VD. Like in in, in Portugal so is a is a is he's a gonna be like, like a Jao Felix level tier player. No, he, no, no. Didn't he, Jao Felix went for one hundred and twenty three million. So he's like a step down. Yeah, step down, step down. And, yeah. An and English I think team learn from that too. That like that that nobody like no not like maybe Mbappe like even though I think he's kind of a little overrated. Um, but like <laughs> but no nineteen year old is worth is worth Jao Felix money. Like that's that was a big like I was. One of the best decisions United's made post Sir Alex is not buying Jean Felix. Well, I also think Jean Felix is in the wrong club. Get him away yeah. from Diego Simone and Atletico Madrid, please, dear God, please, dear God. And then he goes to the national team and play for Fernando Santos. So that poor kid is just like, like get him on City and watch the fuck out. Like if you that kid went to City, watch out. City, Liverpool, Arsenal, yeah, PSG, yeah, anything, yeah, like, either anything like that. All right, so we're over an hour. We're gonna wrap it up. I want to thank VD for coming on. Um, this was fun. I, I could have done actually another hour, no problem. Actually. I know. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, that's all right. I'm just saying it was it yeah. was an easy one. So, all right, guys, Maybe appreciate you, it, buddy. Uh, show up on time, and we can, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, hey, I hate you so yes, much. Yes, yesterday I had unlimited time, but you got you guys wanted to push it back, not me. No, <laughs> well, well, no, no, hey, well, everyone. Uh, <laughs> well, listen, I had comedy. to go. I had to. I had to go to the airport. I, I apologize. Family first. Family first. Uh, family first. All right, you guys have a good one, man. Take care, guys. All right, later. Later, boys.